For many years, we've had two popular languages for tree structured data, XML and JSON. But these languages are pretty lousy for anything that is code or code-like. They're so lousy, in fact, that when companies want to store code-like information as text, they usually resort to designing and building their very own poorly documented mini code language, like this expression language embedded inside Visual Studio project files. At some point, this special language will be embedded in JSON or XML so that two parsers are needed to understand one file. This is wasteful, and not just because you're wasting your own time inventing expression parser number 78,851. Your users may also have to read your documentation to learn the subtleties of your syntax, assuming you publish documentation. Lisp pan fans might say, hey, everybody, use S expressions. S expressions are simple. OK, I have to admit my bias here. I think they're ugly and, more importantly, unusual. But they're also not as simple as they first appear. Having chosen to use S expressions, there's still a lot of code to write and many decisions to make, like those listed here. And traditionally, S expressions represent singly linked lists, but you probably won't literally parse an S expression into a list because when an error occurs, you have to tell the user where that error was in the source text. So you need to store that metadata somewhere. When you add everything up, an S expression parser is still simple, but perhaps only si half the size of a full featured expression language. I started the Loic project in 2007, but got discouraged and abandoned it for a while. In 2012, I finally got around to sketching out a new programming language design called Enhanced C Sharp and a parser generator called LLLPG. And somewhere in there, I got the idea for Loic trees, although it seems I didn't publish anything online about any of that until six months later. Loic trees are an in memory data structure designed to represent any programming language on Earth. I don't want to rule out alien languages, but some Loic tree conventions do depend on ASCII. Each node in a Loic tree is one of three things. An identifier, which names a variable type function operator or keyword or something. A call, which represents either a function call or some kind of construct, like a class declaration, an interface definition, a method, a for loop, an import command. Or a literal, which represents some kind of value, such as an integer character string or unum. Shout out to those who know what an unum is. Literals represent things that are represented as a single unit in a given language. For example, a byte array could be represented as a call node containing a sequence of arguments that are literals for individual bytes. Or it could be a single literal containing the entire array, if that representation makes more sense in a particular language. A literal can be anything, but in order to save it as text, the literal must have a serialized form. So uh, this week, I'm working on how we're going to store those. Uh, serialized forms instead of or in addition to an in-memory form in the node. Each node also has a range that includes a location, a size, and a source file object. Loic trees often represent synthetic code, in which case the source file could be a dummy object. Finally, every node can have a list of attributes. Attributes are a side channel, typically used to represent Java annotations, .NET attributes, access modifiers, or trivia, such as comments and new lines. By convention, the name of a trivia node starts with a percent sign. In this example, there's a trailing comment attached to the code, represented by a trailing trivia node, which contains a single line comment trivia node. The implementation of Loic tree data structure uh, may be optimized. For example, if you ask my code to create a trivia node, it saves memory by creating a single heap object that pretends to be three, the three objects that you see in the diagram. Loic trees don't impose any hard rules on how code is structured, but there are several conventions. For example, apostrophe means operator. So apostrophe equals means the assignment operator. Hash signs not, not illustrated here are used to mark statements, such as variable and class definitions. The text format for Loic trees can be anything. One time somebody asked me about an S expression format, and I was like, OK, sure, here's some code to parse S expressions and convert them into C sharp code. It was probably around Christmas 2012 when I designed LES version 1, which was a very simple and powerful language. But it had this awkward problem where almost anything you would type could be a valid expression, which made it hard to tell users about their mistakes. LES version 2, shown here, is more restrictive and can detect many more mistakes. But it's still fairly simple and looks fairly natural. LES version 2 is fairly stable since I want to provide noise behind me. 
It's fairly stable since I want to provide something that people can re-implement if they want to. It's also backward compatible with JSON. Any JSON file should parse successfully as LES2. LES version 3 looks a bit less natural because of all those dots. I designed it in such a way that the WebAssembly text format could be a subset of LES3. The instant the WebAssembly people, the WebAssembly project was announced, I felt like I was born to work on it. But the WebAssembly people rejected my text format proposal after ignoring it for quite some time, and they didn't give a reason. And after that, I got kind of depressed and I didn't work on LES3 or WebAssembly very much for the next four years. Luckily, though, I was just laid off for my job, thanks to COVID-19. So I've spent the last two weeks working on LES3. You can think of LES as a prefix notation plus a bunch of extra syntax that makes it easier to express various ideas that are common in programming. In LES3, identifiers are conceptually byte sequences that should be valid UTF-8, but don't have to be. The empty identifier, shown last, is valid and represents a missing argument or empty statement. You can think of a literal as a pair of strings. The first string is a type marker indicating both the data type and the syntax of the literal, and the second is the serialized form of the value. The second literal, 1, 2, 3, is considered identical to the first, and the leading underscore signifies that the literal is numeric, despite the use of a quotation marks around the literal. LES3 does not define a meaning for i, but presumably it represents an imaginary number. Calls have a target which is another log tree, so it is syntactically valid to call a number or anything else. Finally, attributes are syntactically similar to Python or Java annotations. This notation is sufficient to represent every possible syntax tree. Well, technically we need one more operation if we consider that log trees aren't really trees but directed acyclic graphs, but never mind that. LES3 has a lot of other stuff beyond the prefix expressions. As you keep this short, I'm not going to explain all of this. Everything you see here can be represented a different way using the prefix notation on the previous slide. Since some of these features are not finalized yet, uh, uh, well, some of the features aren't finalized yet, um, you can participate in the de design process if you want, but all of them are implemented. Oh, it's a long list. All right, here's another example. Above, the C-sharp code for class 1 is represented by a loic tree in LES3 notation. Before writing class 2, I've told my macro processor, LAMP, to import some macros designed to help translate, whoops, to help translate little bits of LES3 code into C-sharp code. This allows me to use a more friendly syntax in class 2. LAMP is a language agnostic macro processor that in principle is compatible with any programming language. In practice, supporting lots of programming languages is a lot of work, and I haven't done it. But the point of all of this is twofold. First, don't write, an exp don't write expression parsers if you don't have to. Try LES. Certainly don't design an expression parser if you can use LES. Uh, certainly, you can only use C Sharp right now for LES parsing, but, you know, hoping to get some help on that. Second, use log trees to provide separation of concerns between syntax and semantics. Although there are no hard rules about what log trees mean, there's a strong convention, and that convention is to copy what other languages do slavishly, especially C Sharp and Java where applicable. For example, you might decide that the hat or caret operator should mean raise a number to an exponent. But in the most popular languages, Java, C Sharp, C++, C, JavaScript, Python, the hat operator means bitwise exclusive or, so that's what it should mean in the log tree. And two asterisks mean ex exponentiation. If your language actually uses the hat operator for exponents, that's fine. But in, the, but in the log tree, store it as two asterisks instead, with a quotation mark at the front, of course. This will not only help separate concerns between syntax and semantics, but it will also make it easier to convert any given piece of code to other programming languages. You've seen it's possible to convert LES code to C Sharp, and I will be adding other output languages in the future. There's a lot more that I could say, but this is already too long. If you want to learn more, visit my websites. Here's two to get you started. And once again, I'd like to thank the deadly COVID-19 virus for sponsoring my work.